Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that is rooted within me. Hi and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. Today is Memorial Day Celebration 185. And it's the last day of November. That's hard to believe. Tomorrow is December. And Holy Day is around the corner and and the one that we just passed. And we're thankful for everybody. And so our calling number is 646-200-4169. And we already have a caller on, but let's first welcome Michael. Welcome to the show, everybody. I apologize. We've got a few little technical difficulties, life on the road, and uh, we're glad that you're with us. We're honored that you're with us, and we're honored to be here to support you today. And our opening request, as usual, is that of inviting you to please uh, be willing to be part of the team that changed the world, part of the team that removes hostility and fear from planet Earth. How do you remove hostility and fear from planet Earth? By removing all forms of hostility and fear from yourself. Well, but they make me so angry. No, nobody can make you angry, but if you've got anger in you, they can sure bring it up for you. So our invitation, our way of doing our part in eradicating war and creating a world of peace is to invite you, as we are doing, to start to forgive. And each time that you come across some form of hostility or fear in yourself, to be willing to let loose of, to forgive, to remove that hostility or fear, to hit the delete button. Forgiveness is about hitting the delete button. It's not about letting somebody else off the hook. Forgiveness is about removing content from your physiology that never belonged in your physiology. There is one cause and one single cause of war and one only, and that is I have some form of hostility or fear in me that I don't want to be responsible for, and I'm going to blame somebody else, and that is what leads to war. So if you uh, would like to avail yourself of the forgiveness work, if you go to our website, www.whyagain.com, it's whyagain.com. On the right-hand side, there's a link that says Download Worksheets. The first five links under that section will give you the whole story. It will give you sample worksheets where we've walked people through on the radio show. It will give you the worksheet. And actually keep an eye posted on the site because probably within the next 24 hours, we'll have a brand-new worksheet on the site with some enhanced features in it. So www.whyagain.com. Download Worksheets is the link. And we're delighted that you're with us. Jeannie, we've got a caller. 
Let's hear from our caller. Yes, we do. Area code 541, I believe that that is Oregon. You are on the air. Is this uh, for Julia Burns? Well, how are you, young lady, Julia? It's Michael and Jeannie, and we're delighted to hear your voice. How are things out in Oregon, Ashland? Yes, well, um, well, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I try to listen every day. So um, I have a little bit of a challenge, and uh, I guess I could use a little advice. Um, okay, well, be, before before we go to the advice phase, have you done any worksheets around whatever this challenge is? Uh, Julia? Oh, yeah, I do. I've, I've got tons of worksheets here. But, yes, I've, I've worked, but I don't have them in front of me right now. Okay. Well, is there some way in, the, in terms of the worksheet that we can support you on whatever this issue is? Um, say that again. Is there, is some, there some way, way that they can, you can question. support me aside from the worksheets? No. Is that what you said? No, I'm not my hearing question you. Is, okay, well, my question is, can you hear me now? Yeah, when you speak right into it, yeah. Okay, so my question is, are there any questions from you regarding the worksheet process to support you in working through this issue, whatever it is? Well, um, no, I think it's pretty clear. I mean, I I get a lot from doing the worksheets. But I wanted to ask a question, which is something that came up like yesterday. And okay. um, um, I I uh, was driving a car uh, without a um, license, uh, without the thing, not because that was my choice, but because um, um, how, how do I even want to go back? And um, uh, they refused to put the insurance on it and that because I supposedly what did I and no it all began with a doctor and a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist whoa, 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 whoa. Well, hold, hold on, hold on, Julia, hold on, hold on. We're going too too far too fast. We we've gone from driving without a license to being the uh, Yeah, but that's what's leading driving without a license only happened because I had made the mistake of saying to my doctor, I said, oh, Dr. Sass is there. Um, uh, why don't you make an appointment with me, which was the worst thing I could ever, ever have done, because within like 15 minutes of him talking to me, he's saying that I'm not psychotic, but um, without um, having hallucinations. And I have now written a 10-page letter to him, and it's gone to the authorities. It's like, all the evidence that this is absolutely not true, including seeing another guy right after me and said, you're perfect. And I said, I know that. But what, the results of this was that it was playing out on my driving and any number of different things, and I'm just in the stage of getting that back so that I have my rights back. Um, okay. This sounds like it's sure. going around in, in, uh, in circles, but one of the things – also, that happened when I, I was in court yesterday. Oh, hold on, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Too far, too fast, Julia. I'm going to ask you to hold on for a second. So let, yeah. let's go back to your original question. It sounds like, from what I'm understanding, you got caught driving your car without a license. Is that true? Was your license suspended or taken from you? Yes, it was, because I didn't. Um, okay. So, I, I didn't, so then, oh, I didn't complete... Um, that, that I, I didn't pass. And what I did is I wrote DMV and the, the people, and I said, this is crazy. These are the tests that were given. Oh. And, uh, oh. and hey, Slow down, Julia, Julia. You yeah. need to slow your mind down a little bit. It's running a 1,000 miles an hour, and we right. need to just take Well, I mean, there are many road. aspects to it. So we're caught in a very early stage from what happened yesterday, which was what was disturbing me. But this Julia? is a background Julia? to it. Oh. Julia, oh, slow down. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of aspects to it. but And, and, and notice that we're, we're going to run off on a lot of details, but what I'd like to do is go back to the original question you asked, and that is you had an issue around you were driving without a license. And and what you said was it wasn't your choice. And and here here would be my offering for you to start with, and that is that, 
when I do something that is absolutely under my control, I do it because I choose to do it. When I deny, when I say it's not my choice, it's the psychiatrist's choice or it's the DMV's choice or whatever, when I deny ownership for my choices, I have to hide a part of my mind from me. Yeah, but you're not getting what I meant by that. What I'm I saying... got what you meant 100%. I got it. I got it real clear. I, I, you I, made I, a choice. You made a choice to drive a car without a license, and you got caught. And you want to blame the psychiatrist. I think I got the picture pretty clear. No, 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 but that, but you're missing a whole chunk. So what I'm saying uh, is the psychiatrist is the one that is saying that made me in the position that they say you shouldn't drive, which was absolutely untrue. I mean, I okay. should I should never have gone to have to do any of those tests. I should never. All of that was triggered by something that he didn't even. He saw me for 15 minutes, didn't know a damn thing. And the one thing that I said, now what am I going to do about this? Is someone breaking into my house? He's a, and he says he doesn't even exist. That's what he says. He doesn't even exist. This guy is now in prison for life with five uh, cases of rape against him and a million-dollar bail. This Julia, is the guy that the Julia, same guy I'm talking about Julia, said didn't exist. Julia, you need to stop. Julia, I can't keep going with this conversation. You need to stop. You need to slow down. I'm going to invite you to notice that your mind is running a 1,000 miles an hour, and I'd offer that maybe the reason it's running a 1,000 miles an hour is because there's something inside yourself you don't want to look at. And so I'm going to keep bringing you back as long as we need to do it. I'm going to keep bringing you back to what you need to look at. You ask for my support. I'm going to give you the best support that I can. And what you need to look at is you made a poor choice. You drove without a license. And that was your choice. I got that all those other things happened, but that's not the reason you got behind the wheel of a car without a license. No, but you didn't hear what the reason was. You got behind the wheel of a car without a license because you chose to get in the car and turn the key and you didn't have a license in your pocket. You knew your license was suspended. You need to take responsibility for that. That's your starting point. I take full responsibility. I'm paying for it in many ways. That's not what the question was. Julia, you're not taking responsibility when you start telling me about how it's all the psychiatrist's fault and the hallucination and and all that. Because they were the ones that why I didn't have the license. That they were the ones who caused me to be in the spell. I had a perfect record. Yeah. They were the cause. Julia, that was the doctor's to... letter was up there at the DMV. Julia. Every person testing Julia. me was seeing this letter. Julia. She said she didn't drive. Julia, I got it. You're in a really emotionally disturbed state right now, and you need to take a breath and let go of all your stories. If you want to work through this, because I can understand with you with the fact that you go, you're going off on a thousand rabbit trails about a thousand things, why a psychologist or a psychiatrist might say you need to get back on track. He did, he, 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 I didn't even see him. He didn't. We didn't discuss any of this. You're not like transposing what I'm doing now with the frustration of this buildup of even being in court yesterday, which was another version of it. And, and and then you're transposing and saying, oh, well, the guy, was uh, he was honest in what he was doing. What I'm telling you is that he was so dumb that he didn't even know that the guy that I was telling him, that the, one of my main causes then was this guy who was in my house, and he said Julia, he didn't exist, and he does exist. Stop. Julia, stop. You're in a state of emotional upset right now, and you're hearing things, me say things that I'm not saying, and you're telling yourself stories that aren't true. What stories? Here's the story, and I'm going to take you back one more time. And, you know, if you're willing to be with me and and listen and hear me, I think that you might be able to start to work through this emotional trauma that you've got going on. But as long as you speak out of your trauma, you're speaking out of a mind that's so confused that it's going to be difficult for you to get anywhere. See, I don't believe it is confused. It's just that I've got a lot of facts all at once, and it's sort of how to spit them out. In in so, in an order that would make sense. So Julia, I mean, something happened here's yesterday. How you, here's, how you, here's how you sort it out in an order that makes sense. You start out, and the first worksheet you do is the worksheet about Julia and how she got behind the wheel of a car and drove without a license. 
and take responsibility for that. I do take responsibility I, I, for that. I'm pay, well, I paid for Julia, it already in the court, Julia, like 600 bucks. Julia, Julia, you need to stop your tongue, you need to stop your mind, and you need to listen. Can you do that? Are you willing to do that? I'm I here to support you. you. I honor you. I love you. I'm, and you're going to have to stop your mind from running for a minute. Yeah, but you're making assumptions and and stating them as as facts, and I'm correcting the facts while we're there because you want me to hold all these facts in and say, no, but you're wrong on this and this and this. That is not what happened. Okay. Julia, are you you willing to listen? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to not say another word until I ask you to speak. Would you do that? All right. And would you quiet your mind? Can you quiet your mind? I think so. Okay, good. Let's start there. You've got a lot of emotional turmoil going on right now. You're going to work through that emotional turmoil by taking it one step at a time. When you try and take on the whole world, this whole situation and circumstance, you've got the guy that broke into your house, you've got the guy that raped these women, you've got the guy that's in prison for life, you've got the psychiatrist, you've got the DMV, you've got the, you've got the, you've got the, you've got the. And it's not their fault that you got behind the wheel of a car when you knew you didn't have a license. Now, when you take that and you project it, and your first words were the, the, it was the psychiatrist's fault, you're not taking responsibility. And you're going to have to sort these things out one at a time to undo the emotional trauma that's going on around but, all of this. But I don't, the, the only reason that I don't have a license to drive is because what he said. It is causal. But Julia? It is causal. That's how it happened. Julia, I had a perfect that, record. Yeah, that's great. And Julia, you didn't get behind the wheel of a car because of what the psychiatrist did without a license. You got behind the wheel of a car because you knew you didn't have a license and you got caught. And yes. it had nothing to do. I got that the psychiatrist was involved in you losing your license. But that's got nothing to do with why you got behind the wheel of a car. And until you start cleaning up the first domino, Blaming the psychiatrist for the fact that you drove without a license. Yes, You're because I didn't have – because he, he was the reason why I didn't have the license. That I was the it. reason why I didn't I have the license. Okay, Julia, you know what? I really want to support you, and I'm going to hold the space, but I'm going to complete our conversation right now because I got that there's so much emotional turmoil that you're not willing to listen. Well, I'm willing to listen, to listen but it seems to yeah. me that you didn't hear that the causal yeah. thing. Julia, I heard perfectly. I understand the reason you lost your license was because of what the psychiatrist said and what happened in his office. I got that. You don't have to explain it to me again. I got it really clear. But that's not the reason you got behind the wheel of a car without a license. The reason you got behind the wheel of a car without a license is because you made a poor choice getting behind the wheel of a car without a license, and you got caught. Until you clean that up and take responsibility for that, the rest of these dominoes aren't going to fall. But I, but I have taken full responsibility. The first worksheet that I would suggest that you do is one on Julia is number 1A. I'm the object of attention. And I got behind the wheel of a car without a license. Poor choice by Julia. And then what are your feelings about that? And this is where you're going to touch into some of the root of this emotion and start to work through and start to let go of this emotion. I'd offer there's your starting point. Now, certainly there are other worksheets around you're upset at the psychiatrist and you're upset at the DMV and all of those, but you've got to start with just one domino to clean it up. You can't handle them all at once. So I'd offer the first and most important worksheet to do is going to be that one of me I've making done a poor it. choice. Say again? I've already done it. Well, well Julia, I'll do it it's again. Hard, it's hard for me to grasp that when you started our conversation out with the, the, that it's all the psychiatrist's fault that you got behind the wheel of a car without a license. I, I, I'm sorry, but you, you're off. Because I had a perfect record and I had a license. Yeah. I lost yeah. the license I, because of that. Well, okay. okay, Julia. I've heard that several times now, and I really want to be here to support you. But I can't support you if, if you're not supportable. So here's my input to you, and, and this is the last time I'm going to say it because we're going to move on with the show. The first worksheet to do, I would offer, 
is Julia is the object of attention. I made a poor choice and got behind the wheel of a car. Your goal in that case is probably, Julia, I want to make better choices and be more clear in my mind. So that would be the goal. And when you start to work through that, that will start to clear out some of this emotion that you want to blame on the psychiatrist and the the um, DMV. So that would be my, my starting point and my input. And uh, I think Jeannie's got another caller, so I'm going to just uh, let this call go for now. Uh, I'd invite you to, uh, to do that worksheet. And once you've really done that one and you get to, ah, I, Julia, made a poor choice. I got behind the wheel of a car without a license. When you start cleaning the emotion you got around that and take responsibility for that, the rest of these dominoes are going to start to fall. That would be my best support for you. Okay? Thanks. All right. We love you. And we hold the space for the best healing you can possibly find in this. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Jean, we have, did you have yes, we do. Area code 517. You're on the air. Good afternoon. Hi. Hey, Rex. Welcome to the hey. show. How are things in Lansing, Michigan? Well, snowy. We got about seven and a half, eight inches of snow last night. Ouch. <laughs> Humans aren't supposed to live in that stuff, Rex. Humans are I know it. to live in that. <laughs> I know it. But, you know, it happens to be where my home is, and I choose to be here, so I'm living in it. And love there it. There you go. <laughs> Um, right. I wanted to mention uh, that we are having our support group tonight. I tried to get on last uh-huh. night yesterday, but there was obviously some very important work happening, so I kind of checked off. You know, it was very important what you were doing, and I appreciate it. Um, so we're having our support group tonight in Lansing, Michigan, um, at my home, and I sent you an email, uh, and Jeannie should have that in the email program. I sent it out yesterday. Yeah, it's on it's on the website, so people can just go to our website and uh, click on the link to uh, support groups and uh, the details with your address and phone number to contact you and all that neat stuff is there. That's fabulous, Lansing, Michigan. If you're in the Lansing area, jump in the car and the work the uh, support group starts at seven tonight, Rex. Yep, seven to nine. Awesome, fabulous. All and right, then next Anything Saturday. Else? Uh, yes, um, I'm going to be sending you another flyer. I sent one out. I don't know if it's on your website yet. I haven't checked that, but I'm doing a Healing Through Relationships workshop next Saturday morning in Lansing as well. Awesome. Now, I, I did, do I remember correctly that you sent us that a couple of weeks ago? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, well, I think it's on the website then. I think Jeannie put all that on the site. So you might get a picture of let us know, but uh, yeah, absolutely, we'll uh, we'll be holding the space that uh, it becomes an awesome happening. Sounds great. I'll let you get back to your other callers. Uh, good job and thank you. All right, wonderful blessings. Bye bye. Blessings. Is Doctor Tim with us? Tim? Tim is not, but David is on. Oh, okay. Well, David, how are you today, sir? I'm doing very well for the ground is dry here. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day, and that white stuff is staying away. So <laughs> I'm doing very uh, well. well. I, I like I like oh, what you well, said. I, we're, not design, we're not designed to live in there. And it is fun to be able to be in it at times. So doing well this right. morning, uh, processing through things. Uh, went with the new worksheet and uh, looking forward to the Next little bit that unfolds with it, and uh, being interested and eager to hear from uh, anyone out there that's been doing their five worksheets a day for the past nine days. Is oh yeah, this is the tenth day, and see how they're doing. We're a fourth of the way through, and uh, see how it's going for folks. Yes. Well, I've been having fun with my worksheets and getting some very nice insights. And uh, so it's uh, it's been good to get focused and concentrated and back to uh, to doing that five a day. I, I appreciate you uh, bringing that up and uh, making that suggestion to, to, to the group to do. And, of course, this is, I think, day nine now, if I'm counting correctly. I think my worksheets are numbered up to 45. 
It's chance. We're into yeah, this is day ten. We've completed day nine. I know my last worksheet last night was number forty five. So uh <laughs> awesome to be doing that and I did talk to Dr. Tim this morning and he was expecting to be on the show and uh, he is uh, he did a support group last night in um, uh, Crystal Lake and introduced the new worksheet and again the, the new worksheet will probably be on the site uh, a little later today I'm still uh, working out of actually uh, since I sent you that one last night David I've made a couple of just minor changes but uh, it's uh, it's still just uh, being refined with the, the new material on it. So okay. yeah, it's an awesome process to be involved in. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Cool. So, Jeannie, is there, are there any questions in the chat room? Anything happening there? Any uh, Anything in the on the website that uh, is happening or calls? Um, we don't have any other callers right now. Our call-in number is 646-200-4169. Press one if you want to talk. There's um, oh, somebody asked for David's email, so it's David Hayes, and that's H A Y E S at whyagain dot com. That's W H Y A G A I N dot com. Um, someone said that they would like to contact you since they are doing five a day. This is awesome. Great. So, yeah, very cool. And yep. uh, I. Uh, I've also been doing the five a day, and I had to get off the show for just a second. Uh, my son had called back in, and I'd been processing him this morning. So while I had him on the phone, I asked him if he would commit to doing one worksheet with me every morning, and he said he would. Awesome. So. Good Very to you. Cool. Well, and, and maybe just share a little bit about what just happened, Jeannie. That's, that's, that was awesome with Ryan. Yeah, he um, – and, you know, Ryan knows this work, but he doesn't do it. I mean, like – a lot of people, they know it in their head and they know it works, but then they don't do it. But uh, he had some issues coming up of not having enough money uh, to be able to make it this month. And he was in a total panic and he felt like, you know, he's newly married and just out of college and he just really felt hopeless and like he had been letting people down and, and he hated having to call to, to let me know he couldn't make rent. And I mean, it was just like one thing after the other and it had just avalanched on him and and he was in a wreck. And um, so anyway, uh, we breathed with him, got him to calm down, and, and uh, walked through doing a worksheet about money and uh, not having enough. And, and anyway, when we got to the end of it, he was a whole lot more peaceful. He felt, you know, he, he went from like a level 10. Well, I told him it was actually like a 100, but <laughs> emotional <laughs> upset to a 3. And uh, said he felt a whole lot better, and he could see where it was a situation where he didn't need to get that upset. That yeah, it was still something that you know he needed to do some problem solving around, and but he didn't need to get that upset about it. And I told him, you know, I said it's when our stress is up that high, it's like having blinders on, and, and the answer might be right beside of us, but we can't see it because. We've got these blinders on, and all we can see is what's right in front of us, which is filled up with all this problem, and. That if, you know, he could just let go of the stress and, you know, we talked about how it was genetic. You know, I did a worksheet with him on the same issue and, you know, we just kind of walked through it and, and he got down to where he wanted a peaceful relationship with money. I had said something how about abundance and he laughed and he said, that'd be great. He said, but I'd, just be, I'd be happy just to have enough. And I said, well, watch what you ask for. But anyway, um, we walked through that, and I told him, you know, some things that he could work on while we were on the radio show that would help with the problem solving. One of the big things is him just being out of college. He has like $500 a month in school student loans. And I said, you know, call them. And so when he called back and I flipped over and answered, he, he has two different loans, and he got a hold of one of them, and they deferred. He, has, he doesn't have to make any payments until next December. And, oh. yeah. And so he he called the other one and they faxed him a or sent him a form by email and said fill it out and fax it back to us and we'll get it processed. So he's got both of his student loans deferred. And um, so anyway, but what he got down to the bottom and we were talking and and I was started reading the commitment to him, and I don't got one line out of my mouth and he goes oh something that I just saw, and he had spoken to his dad before he called me, and. Uh, the reason was is because he had had to make 
rent payments and payments last month because of the same issue. He didn't have enough. And so here he was. He was going to do it again, and so he didn't want to call me. And he tried to go and get a loan this morning. They refused him, and so he called his dad, and his dad had some kind of hurtful things to say back to him. And and, uh, so what came to him at the end of the worksheet was one of the statements that his dad made was that um, he was now hurting other people because he was – you know, going to have to borrow money or whatever and or wasn't going to pay rent this month and that was going to hurt me. And, and so he got back down to that he wasn't good enough and he was letting people down. And so the money was just one issue, but he realized that the big issue was that he was always trying to be the perfect person and keep everybody else happy and not let anybody down. And that when his dad made that statement to him that it was like just an avalanche of all this emotion came back out and so he that was a big insight for him at the end of that. And so while I was talking to him, I was like, you know, um, would you be willing until we can get through this because, you know, it's genetic. And I said, um, we'll do one worksheet. Woo, emotion. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweetie. That old perfect person issue is a big one in the family, <laughs> thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. The demand that that you be perfect or you get beat up. So anyway, I said, would you do one worksheet with me every morning? And he said, yeah. And he goes, oh, but what about the mornings I work? And he goes, no. He said, even the mornings I work, I'll get up early. Mm. (laughs) Awesome. So you got two generations working and cleaning that one out and, you know. Maybe the next worksheet is going to be about the, the beatings that you've both taken for not being the perfect person. Yeah. That your power person, you know, for him is just that. I think that was an awesome insight for him to get that this money is just a projection for his needing to be perfect and needing to keep everybody happy and that it's not about money at all. Yeah, he's got to handle his money stuff, but but all that emotion. I mean, he was in just huge emotional turmoil. Could hardly speak. He could hardly understand him on the phone. And 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 this whole conversation, and this is a principle to really understand. This whole conversation was all about the money and all about the bank and all about you know. And truth is, when we are able to collapse that by canceling the goal we have, that's step number five in the worksheet. What happens is. By collapsing that whole projection game, we get to go back to the inside where the real problem is. And he he just immediately dropped into, boom, oh, this is about me, Dad making derogatory comments and me trying to be perfect, trying to keep Dad happy. So much of the trauma that goes on, you know, these holidays that are coming up, so much of the trauma that could possibly go on in your household if you don't clean it up isn't going to be about anything that's happening in your household. It's going to be about still trying to please the power person, still trying to fix it for the power person, still trying to be perfect. And, you know, that goes for all of us. And so instead of, you know, that's one of the pseudo-solutions we offer in the Codependence to Interdependence Workshop. One of the single solutions that the non-being mind thinks will work is if I could just fulfill all my power person's goals. And all of Dad's berating with Ryan was all about, um, you know, well, if you just did money better. If you were just, in essence, the way Ryan heard it was good enough. And so maybe the worksheet for tomorrow will be the beatings that have been taken from the power person for not being right there on the spot, fulfilling every one of their goals. And that'll clear a whole other space in him. It's just awesome that he's willing to do it. I I just acknowledge him and congratulate him. Yeah. Um, And And you for being there, to to hear you speaking the commitment to your son. I mean, I go back and think, my mom was awesome, but what another level would have been if she had been able to say to me, son, I promise to trust you enough to tell you the truth, to be true to you and treat you lovingly, gently, and with respect in my thoughts, my words, and my actions, whether I'm in your presence or not. How powerful a thing. How powerful. There's the best Christmas gift you could give your son in a million years. 
So I acknowledge you for doing that, Jean. That's awesome. Thank you. And and how many of us in our lives, if we had the awareness, would have had a totally different relationship with the people in our lives, our children, our parents, our spouses, if we'd have been able to speak those words to them. Exactly. And we do have two callers that have popped in, um, but before we do, I'm I'm putting um, a link out in the chat room, but for those that are just listening by phone, on our website, if you go to uh, quiagain.com and then go down and click on Stories, Quotes, and Links, if you roll down through there, it's called Made in America, and somebody had sent it to us, and it's phenomenal. Uh, different things that you can do for Christmas. One of the things I suggested to my son was instead of them trying to, you know, buy big gifts or whatever for each other, I said, draw up your own little certificate, you know, for a one-hour massage or whatever. And 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 uh, oh yeah. Michael was just saying that you can actually, you know, download official looking certificates or whatever and fill them in. But I had suggested, I said, just something happened to do with time. But there a, was a thing that somebody sent to us. It was called Made in America Gifts. And to start a new tradition for Christmas, for birthdays, or for whatever. And doing things that are made in America. But it was things like, you know, everybody needs a haircut. So, you know, use a local barber and get a certificate for them. Or if you cut hair, offer to cut people's hair. You know, or like I suggested to my son, the massage or, you know, uh, local restaurants. Anyway, it's a whole uh, list of things that you can do that supports the country, but also is an easier way of supporting people at this Christmas time. So are we ready for our next phone call? Let's go for it. All right, area code 330, you're on the air. Yeah, this is Art again. I tuned in again today, and I... I have a little less confused mind today, but I just wanted to tell both of you guys what a fantastic program you have here and what a great service you're doing for humanity here with this program. It's fantastic. Thank you. Well, our our, uh, our commitment is to take this to every mind, heart, and being on the planet. That's why we started doing this show. That's why uh, we left home three weeks ago. We won't get back there until next July, and we're going to be in as many places, as many cities as we can be, presenting the tool of forgiveness. And just, uh, you know, we humans just need to clean up this insanity that makes us function as non-humans and be restored to human life. So thank you for the acknowledgement. Thank you for saying thank you, and uh, and thank you for what you're doing for the world. I mean, your your project is just so awesome in the way it's going to change what's going on in third world countries. It's it's just um I I I'm delighted and honored to be sharing the planet with you and uh, the projects that you're uh, participating in delighted in keeping our eyes open and peeled for how we can support it and move it forward on the planet. Great. Well, I really do want to become a billionaire, and the reason I want to become a billionaire is so I can support programs like you're doing now so that uh, you can uh, live a better lifestyle and other people that are doing the same kind of work that you're doing because I think I can do a lot better things with uh, that billion dollars than the government does, for one thing. Well, I'd uh, I'd second that one, and uh, and you have my support in that. And and actually, uh, if somebody gave us a million dollars today, we wouldn't change our lifestyle very much. You know, I could only wear one pair of shoes. Um, but what we would do is we'd expand the ability to deliver forgiveness to every mind, heart, and being on the planet. And, and by the way, anybody that's listening to the show, if you find yourself benefiting from it, you can go to our website, and there's a donate button. Support us. Uh, Jeannie and I don't do what we do. You know, when we travel like we do, we pay our own expenses, our workshops are free. We don't do that because we're independently wealthy or because there's some big corporation behind us or our not having his billion dollars yet isn't funding us. But what we do is that we invite people who benefit from the work to support us and keep making it further and further field, making it wider and more and more widely available to more and more people. And uh, leading to a critical mass shift on the planet. So, well, I came up with, <clears throat> uh, well, 
I have another technique that you're, prob- you're probably aware of that I've uh, forgotten, but it, it, it's really very powerful, and there's two parts to it. First, for most of the t- a lot of times, we're too close to a situation to see what's going on. But if we see somebody else in our lives that are a little bit at a, at a distance and they're going through the same things, we can see it clear as a bell because we're not so so close to it. And and hopefully we can learn from that kind of a thing. And <clears throat> when we do become aware of it, one of the things that I've tried to use and unsuccessfully, but I'm going to do it again, is that if you have a problem that keeps recurring in your life and you finally become uh, aware of it and you have a trusted friend, you can tell them, you can say, hey, when you see me not owning up to and taking responsibility, lovingly remind me. And I think that's a really good technique to stop what you you were, were what I was seeing with uh, with uh, in your situation with Julia there on the phone. If she got to that point and had a friend that could clue her in right away, then you know we can stop the avoidance and get right back to solving the problem. Exactly. Well, and and you know that one of the things we get into, and there's a workshop we do called. Uh, Communication, did you hear what I think I said? Right. And in that workshop, one of the things we distinguish is the difference between solving a problem and healing. And, you know, the conversation we were just having about Ryan, and Ryan had a problem, and, and, and all of this emotion is projected on money. But to, if, if somebody come along and just handed him $10,000 and, boy, all his bills are paid and he's got extra money in the bank, then he'd have lost out on the opportunity to heal this dynamic about being good enough and, and pleasing dad. And, you know, that would mean if somebody came along and just magically solved his problem for him, then he'd have to find another situation in which that would come up and it would be, you know, it would maybe transfer where, gee, he has one of those conversations with dad, he's not feeling good enough, and, you know, his wife happens to turn his, her head the wrong way the next day that resonates that issue he had with dad, and all of a sudden it's now all that emotion pointed at his wife. That's what really destroys relationships. And so we suggest that people really focus on healing first. If I'm in some sort of pain, some sort of hostility or fear, I need to be about removing my hostility and fear. That's my real problem. My problem isn't the money, the relationship, the the, the car, the, the whatever, the problem is, what's my emotional take that keeps me in darkness? And so when I can take responsibility for one piece of my own puzzle, rather than going on and talking about somebody else and something else, then I can start to go inside myself and heal the root of that issue. And so we always suggest that in the, you know, there's a seven step, there's another worksheet on the website called Responsibility Communication, the seven steps we offer to people of responsibility communication. And the seventh step is problem solving. Okay, if the problem is still there, great, go do some solving. But first and foremost, do the healing. Because if we don't do the healing, then we get to live the title of my book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. So... Cool. What, what is, by the way, Art, just, just for information's sake, what is happening with your book? Have you uh, moved anywhere with that? Well, uh, actually it's uh, still in limbo because of not having enough uh, funds to uh, publish it. But I see that moving forward and now. And actually I've I've been inspired to do something almost in front of that book, which happens to be... Uh, based uh, and and all clues in exactly what you were, we're talking about, and I'm basing it around uh, freedom and our free will, and that everybody on the planet is free to think and act as we, as we please, and therefore we are personally responsible for our thoughts and actions, and it can't yeah. be any other way. It doesn't matter whether you think you're a divine being having a human experience, or you have the uh, misfortune of thinking you're a worm on the dust of the dust you're still personally responsible for your thoughts and actions not anybody else and so i'm sort of working on that because 
too many people are always blaming their parents, the government, you know, somebody else, never themselves. Yeah, this this blame, you know, and and you know, I I love this song. How long has this been going on? You know, if we go all the way back to the story of the Garden of Eden, there's an apple that gets eaten. The creator shows up and says, Adam, what are you doing? What's happening here? And, and, and you listen to Adam's conversation with God, and what does he say? That woman that you gave me. <laughs> so he's got God and the woman to blame. And, of course, Eve is that snake. This is such a, such a thing to go on. And, and you look all through the scriptures, and everywhere that humans don't want to be responsible, they blame God. There's, there's actually a, a, several passages in the scriptures that describes God telling men to go out and, and there's an enemy and to go out and kill everybody in that village, every person, every man, woman, child, baby, and animal. And people actually believe that God said that and directed that. Yeah. And there's more of that same game of we've got to have somebody to blame when we don't want to be responsible for our behaviors. And you're right. I'm right with you on that, that we need to grow up as a species and live human lives, which means we realize we are creators, we have creatorship, and we take responsibility for our creatorship. Yeah, it's like uh, Pogo the comic strip said, we have met the enemy and it is us. <laughs> right, Exactly. And, and Art, I, I would love to see your book on Course in Miracles get out there and just a, a piece of information, if you're not familiar with it or anybody else that's working on writing because publishing is a, is a big challenge. If you're familiar, there's a company out there called cdbaby.com, as in contact this CD Baby. And what CD Baby did was that they set up for music artists to be able to make their CDs and get them out there and, and publish them and sell them on the Internet and just did an awesome job, really benefited the music scene tremendously. Well, the company CDBaby.com decided to morph and create another organization, so now they've got a thing called BookBaby.com. You might want to take a look at it, Art. For $100, $100 their introductory offer is $100, you can send them your book. They'll put it in an ebook format. They will totally, completely format it. Uh, I forget exactly, but for a few extra dollars, they'll get an ISBN for you if you don't know how to do that. They'll publish your book as an ebook. They'll put it on Amazon. They'll put it on Barnes and Noble. They'll put it on all the major booksellers around the globe. And they will collect the royalties from the sales and give you 100% of them. Oh, my God. It's awesome. A hundred dollars. Your book can be out there before Christmas, and they they place it. They handle the sales. They handle all of that. They have it all set up. They're doing this for authors the same way they did for music artists, and they don't take a penny from the royalties. They charge you that up front fee of $100. If you don't have a book cover, I think it's another $200. They'll design your book cover. They'll, they'll get an ISBN for you. But for $100, you can be published if your book is ready. Send it to them. They go through it. They format it. They make sure it's all in proper format and collect your royalties for you and give you 100% of it. It's awesome. I'll have to look into that. That's fantastic. Yeah, book, book baby, or bookbaby.com. So, very good art. Well, again, we are we are certainly in the space of love for your family and and all that's happening. Uh, is there a memorial happening for Zach uh, or scheduled at this point? Uh, they're still trying to find a location to uh, to do that. Um, my ex-wife wants to have a private ceremony, but. Uh, I wanted to tell you again and thank you again because what I had heard on the taped show that uh, I wasn't aware of and then you told me it happened, I, I listened to that and I got the closure that I needed and the story that you had reiterated to me again and the gentleman, that Ari, that called in about Zachary, it yeah. it it made me feel at ease that I know Zachary's up there listening to us now, and uh, he's getting it. Awesome. Well, we certainly, 
we certainly hold Zachary in the light and in the space that as he moves on in his eternal journey, that he's able to go directly to the light and take his next step in love and in his genius. We we hold that space for him and uh, and for everything that's going on with your former wife, uh, your son Chris, the whole family. We're just here to, with our hearts open to support you, and we cherish you and honor you and and are honored to be sharing the planet for, with you, Art. Thank you for your call. Thank you. Okay, blessings and love. So, Jeannie, I understand you've got a couple more callers for us. Yes, we do, and we're down to nine and a half minutes. So um, the first caller is 619. You're on the air. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi, how are you doing? We are good. Give, give us a name and where are you calling from? Uh, San Diego, California. My name is Coco, and uh, uh, I've been visiting my daughter. I come from a very dysfunctional family, drugs, alcohol, uh, verbal, physical, and sexual abuse through my life and my daughter's life. And uh, I'm trying to get close to her, but the last visit was a couple days ago. And I had to leave there because it, it really, everything I say or do, it comes down to, I know you, re, you don't remember because I don't remember a lot of things due to my alcohol. Listen, and I've been in recovery for 34 years now. And uh, uh-huh. uh, plus also my uh, a car accident, a couple of car accidents impair my brain. And, uh, you know, everything now is like a discovery phase for me. And she was telling me all the ugly things i done to her when uh, I was under the influence, like hitting her with a, uh, uh extension course and demanding and all this, you know. And I uh-huh. finally had to tell her, you know, I don't remember nothing my dad from my past. I, I had blacks that lost the memory. And I said, right. but you know what, what you're telling me, I don't like that ugly person that you're telling me. And uh, I would like to know how can I help you. But in the meantime, I'm hurting, you know, because how long do you need to apologize to somebody? I've been apologizing for almost 24 years for my part. Being an alcoholic and blackout, you know. So I take it from your I take it from your accent that you speak Spanish. Yes, I do. So there is a copy of the Reality Management the Forgiveness Worksheet on our website in Spanish, and some Uh, instructions. I'm not comfortable with English, you know. I really don't write and read Spanish. I just talk Spanish. Uh, and uh, okay. everything I do is in, in English, you know. But I just, uh, okay. I'm just tired of uh, all this, you know. And I, I hear thought, you. I thought, hey, I don't want to see you no more. I left there with excuse, you know, and I didn't feel good about it, you know. I left with excuse that I need a doctor appointment. I cannot cancel it, and I get out of there fast. Took me eleven hours and a half to get back to my house, and and uh, I, I mean I'm tired of running. That's what I, I listening to you is what I feel that I'm doing, you know. But I'm so, trying to so here we, Go ahead. So here, so here would be my input for you. I would okay. suggest you go to the website whyagain.com and download the worksheet in English then. There's a radio show that we did. There's a radio show that we did several weeks ago. That there's an MP3. You can just click on it and listen. Download to your computer and listen to the worksheet being done. I would suggest that you start doing some forgiveness work around the pain that you have over the pain that your daughter has. And one of the things that a lot of people do is they get into the way our culture teaches us is to be sorry, sorry, sorry. 
and I would suggest that you never say the words I'm sorry to your daughter again. Uh-huh. If you if you can see where you've made mistakes, what we suggest is a substitute for apologizing is, you know, I own it. First of all, I really made a mistake. I don't have a lot of memories of that time, but I know I had some abusive things going on. That's how I was raised, and I realized that I did that. And I heartfully apologize for that. And then, instead of focusing on what you did that was so terrible, in her mind at least, instead of focusing on that, then make the focus on what you're going to do from now on to shift the conversation into, you know, I realized that I made some mistakes and I heartfully apologize for that. And in the future, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to treat you lovingly, gently, and with respect. And by the way, I have this tool called forgiveness with which you and I could both start to do some work and move through this pain that you carry from what happened to you in your life. And I'll at the same time work through the pain that happened to me that came from what happened in my life. And together we can start to move on a healing path rather than kicking each other to the curb because of the pain that we've been involved in. So that would be my highest input and my my support for you. And as you do the worksheet process, you know, you really truly put the pen to the paper, then what I would invite you to do is if there are any questions or any pieces of it that don't make sense to you, that you don't understand, then please pick up the phone, call back into the show, share those questions with us, and give us the opportunity to answer them and to support you. Thank you very much. I All right. Well, we hold the space for you. We hold we hold the absolute space of love and the opening in your family system. You know, I, I can guarantee that if you go back to mom and dad and mom and dad's moms and dad's and mom and this has been going on for a long time. It's not your fault. Is what you did your responsibility? Yes. Is what your daughter does her responsibility? Yes. And now when I apologize for my mistakes and I focus on, and from now on we're going to breathe together, we're going to forgive together, we're going to heal this whole family game, then you change the whole world. And that's our support for you. And okay. any way we can help, we are absolutely delighted to help you with it. Okay, and that's www.yagain.com. Yes, com. That's it. And it's about the sixth link on the right-hand side. You'll see some links. About the sixth link down is um, download worksheets. Thank you very much, and God bless you. And God bless you, and we hold that you have wonderful, happy, holy days, and that upcoming for you, your daughter, and your whole family is the best year yet of your eternal lives. Bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. You too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Jeannie, we've got another caller. Um, they actually dropped off. I guess they realized we were getting close to time. We're down to about a minute and a half. So that's all of the callers for the day, and there's no questions in the chat room. Well, then, uh, let's let's just talk with David oh, again just, for a couple minutes. We just had a, one of the callers just called back in. Okay, well, we've got a minute or two. Let's go for it. All right, 541, you're on the air. Hi, Michael. It's Julie Matthews. Thank you. Hi, Julie. Um, Hi, Julie. Hi, Jeannie. We've got about 45 seconds, Julie, so. Right, right. Um, yesterday you were talking a lot about suicide. Suicide has come up quite a bit, and um, and then today money and crazy thinking that just keeps us never taking responsibility, and I love what you said about the domino. Um I just want to remind everyone, and I think this is true, especially since we're doing five worksheets a day, we are we are hugely uncovering stuff, and it's coming up for everybody in, in really big ways. We are a family. We are a one energetic being at some yeah. level. So so thank you to everyone, and, 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 and I want to encourage everyone that we really are doing the work, and so um, don't let it get you, you know, overwhelmed. It's big work right I'll now. Okay, Julie. Julie, thank you. We we do have to close the show. Thank you for your call. And 
call in tomorrow. We can chat some more about what's happening, and we appreciate everybody that's here. Bring a stranger tomorrow. Next week, we start in Pompano. We're actually going to be in Boca and in Tamarack and in Pompano starting on Friday. So check the website for where we'll be and have the best year yet of your eternal life. Thanks for being here. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. 